This is the first time I think we've done this. Yeah. You know, we know each other, but we never had a chance to properly dive in on your music. I'm super excited to see you. Yeah, me but. too. Thank you so much for having me. It wasn't for lack of trying, I think. And, and I'm sure, you know, you would have felt the same way, but you, it just happened so fast. Like, I just yeah. feel like new rules connected around the same time we launched Beats 1 and then just like gone. Honestly, it was such a whirlwind. So crazy. And you never expect anything to do that. Yeah. When I started, it was very much of like just constantly putting music out, trying to get people to to get to know me a bit more. You know, it was a long process. I feel like I was like seven singles deep by the time <laughs> New Rules came out, but then people only really, like New Rules was the one that really connected. We've been thrashing your new song as has the rest of the world because Thank what you. an amazing up-tempo, really bold, strong first statement to make. Why did you decide to go with that one first? It felt like the perfect introduction to the new record mm. because the record is is still a pop record. I love pop. It's what I do. But it's nostalgic. It has a disco influence to it. Like the whole album is quite different from the first. When did it really become real for you? When did you realize that this wasn't just kind of uh, a hobby gone and going one way, that it was actually legitimately going to happen? I played Glastonbury and it was, um, I want to say it was like Saturday and my slot was on the John Peel stage at like midday. And I was like, no one's going to show up. Right. And I was petrified I run out onto stage the whole tent is full there's people outside of the tent it's pouring down with rain yeah and they're still there staying yeah. and watching yeah and uh, I was like oh my god like all these people are here to come and see me I think about the machine and I think about you know what can surround an artist when it starts to take off and, and I'd imagine it always begins with a sense of purity and trying to protect you but I've seen over and over again artists ultimately lose touch with their own vision and their own ideas yeah. because there's so many people and opinions and things around even with the best of intentions. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I say this over and over because I've been, I've been so fortunate to have such an amazing team and my management and my label that everyone like fought my corner. Before I signed my record deal, I already had like some songs and I was like, this is the direction I'm going in. Yeah, yeah. So if, Get on board or if not. you guys like this, yeah, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. And that was really beneficial very early on. And now when I, I started Future Nostalgia, I had a couple of people be like, all right, you sure this is what you want to do? Because obviously it was so, so it, it is so different from, from the last record. If you listen to the first record, it's like every song was pretty much done on a different microphone. Yeah. A lot of those songs remain demo version. You know, I, I, I was writing like a song a day and I was picking the songs that I liked and I was like, okay, this, this, this. And, and that's just kind of how they stayed. A lot of the album tracks like did not change from the first day that I wrote them and I recorded them. But again, it was one thing that I, I was learning, whereas now I like sat down and I wanted to have like the same strings in multiple different songs. So it would all feel cohesive. Yeah, yeah. Singing everything on the same mic and going in and re-vocaling songs after demo version and making sure that they all sound right, wanting my vocal a little bit higher in the mix. Like all these things that I felt like I learned over the the. the the course of time. Uh, and then, you know, Electricity goes on to win to win a Grammy. Yeah. Which was huge. Yeah, it was massive. I, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I I, I remember that moment because um, I was backstage getting ready for the red carpet yeah. and there was like a TV by the, by the dressing rooms just outside and they were like, uh, just my team goes, do a quick, come outside because they're going to, they're, they're doing the, the dance recording um, award. And I go out and I look and I'm like, I just don't, I just don't know what to expect. And then they say electricity and I'm just screaming, screaming. in the dressing room. Because you don't know how you're going to react to that thing until you get it. No, it was crazy. A lot of artists don't ever get there and some take a long time to decide to speak up about anything, be it small to large. And when did you realize that you, that you wanted to use your voice in that regard? I think I've always been a bit outspoken um, in terms of things that I believe in. I've suffered backlash from that but still been okay with it and I, I'll never kind of retract statements that I really believe in but whenever I spoke about like women in Saudi Arabia and the mm -hmm. rights and the things mm -hmm. that happen or like if I'm supporting different charities and talking about certain things especially you know women protesting about women's rights in, in God, can you really know wind some people it, up and it really don't. does wind people it's up crazy. I think that the you know the whole abortion rights as well that definitely kicked up a fuss yeah right and you, even as a kid, you know, you felt like you, there was a fire in you. Where you felt that you, you understood what injustice represented and you weren't having it. Yeah, completely. But I also, I feel like I saw so much, like, I felt like there was a lot of female competition always being portrayed in the music industry way before I, you know, became a part of it. And I think it's kind of breaking that because 
at the moment, there's so much support that I feel like I'm getting from my female peers. I think it's something that we need to explain that there is room for everyone. Yeah. I think the world is just so much more of a better place if you can acknowledge and support other artists. And that's not just me talking about just women, but all artists. You can choose, use your platform to inspire, to delight, to entertain, to inform and educate. What is your relationship like with social media as a person, not as not as Dua Lipa the artist? All that I try and do with my platform is try and portray like mm-hmm. positive um kindness good like and good intentions like it. and and I'm outspoken for things that I believe in and things that I feel like I see my fans talking about on Twitter that I want to be a voice for them and then I see really negative comments and I'm like I, I feel like these people should should know me by now because everything that I've done but it's tricky it's eh? it's a very it's, it's so tricky it's and interesting it, Dua Lipa is with us in New Music Daily we've covered a lot of ground and I and I want to just kind of go back to new music and talk about this forthcoming album and what are some of the overarching themes on the record you feel lyrically for yourself a song on the record which lyrically is is maybe my favorite but it's about um being a woman it's really kind of like cutting really straight to the point kind of lyrics um which is something like um like as an example when I'd walk home from school and it would be dark and there'd be like boys on the streets on like their bicycles or whatever like I would walk down the street like Wolverine with my keys through my knuckles and just like run up to my house. How scary is that? That as a woman that you have that's to do that and you have to that's think, anxiety think inducing at a young age. that you might have to like protect yourself and not knowing how you do that. And it's it's very like blatant, straight to the point kind of things that are or have been such a massive part of our, our lives for so long. Do you feel the conversation is getting louder and changing ultimately? Do you think it's going in the right direction? Have you seen change even since the last Grammys? We are seeing change, you know, even even about the, the Grammys, you know, they've appointed their first female CEO, Deborah Dugan. So I think it's 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 important to kind of see see the change and be a part of the change and, and you know, constantly keep working towards that. Yeah. You know, music companies, labels, managements, whatever, you know, have to do like diversity audits and, and you know, be surprised and, and fix the problem and kind of start from the bottom and just start again. Yeah, I think get it's over really the fear of wondering and actually get the answers. Absolutely. Work from there. Can you see yourself doing this forever? I want to, I don't know. I think, you know, I, I have a foundation in Kosovo called Sunny Hill mm-hmm. Foundation. Can you tell us a bit about it? It's basically a foundation I started with my family for, to kind of help young kids in Kosovo and like creative arts. So it's kind of giving these kids... Um, an opportunity to get their music out there because when I was living in Kosovo, there wasn't like the the opportunity to, you know, especially with streaming services yeah, to course, to you know put music out and be heard all over the world. For when I lived in Kosovo, I was like, I have to move back to London to be in a place where everything's happening yeah. to to try and get to where I want to be. Whereas now, you know, that there's so much opportunity. I felt proud when Miley Cyrus got up and performed in Kosovo. Like no one would come down there to perform, so she's the first international female artist to come and perform in Kosovo and put on a crazy show. It was really amazing because the music that was like predominantly happening in Kosovo was all hip hop. Mm. So my first show out there was Method Man and Red Man. And then, and then it was um, Snoop high. Dogg, Fifty Cent. Wow! Like, they, they, they were the artists that actually came down to Kosovo. So when we announced Miley, it was like it was a massive personal milestone for me to be able to bring that feeling that I wish I had when I like yeah. when I was living there. Listen, it's great to see you. I hope this is. A, we, I hope we can, can make this a regular thing. Yeah, I would absolutely love that. I know you're I'll, gonna. Get I'll be back whenever you have me. Thank you so much, Zane.